Botox is a potent peptide that has become somewhat of a meme for people of a certain age wanting to look less than that age. However, Botox's applications go far beyond the cosmetic, as AbbVie's acquisition of Botox maker Allergan reminds us. Botox is a neurotoxin, a substance that destroys nerve tissue. The bacterium Clostridium botulinum produces it and causes botulism, one of nature's most lethal toxins. In fact, it's 100,000 times as potent as the poison gas sarin. How in the world did such a deadly substance become a medicine? It all comes down to dose. The amount of toxin used for medical or cosmetic purposes is minuscule. It's estimated that a baby aspirin-sized amount of the powdered toxin is enough to provide a year's global supply of Botox. Just how does Botox paralyze muscles? Botox works by blocking acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter released by motor neurons to activate muscles. Putting the brakes on acetylcholine puts the brakes on muscles. Unchecked, the toxin can kill by stopping the diaphragm muscles from working, leading to respiratory failure. This paralyzing toxin can benefit human health in tiny, localized doses. The FDA first approved Botox over 30 years ago to treat strabismus, otherwise known as cross-eyes. Strabismus is caused by overactivity in one of the two muscles responsible for lateral eye movement. Relaxing the muscle results in normal eye alignment. Some mature strabismus patients who received Botox injections noticed a welcome side effect. Fewer wrinkles between their eyes. By temporarily paralyzing the frown muscles, Botox made the unwanted furrow disappear. The FDA officially approved Botox for cosmetic use in the early aughts. Since then, the FDA has approved Botox for many other indications, including overactive bladder syndrome, chronic migraine, upper and lower limb spasticity, cervical dystonia, eyelid spasms, and excessive sweating. Atrial fibrillation, an abnormal heart rhythm, can result from heart surgery. Researchers are finding that Botox may also have another important role to play. Preliminary studies suggest that injecting this neurotoxin into the nerve-rich fatty pads of tissue outside the heart reduces the rate of atrial fibrillation and related complications in cardiac patients. Presumably, the benefit comes from temporarily blocking nerve signals to the heart. Larger-scale studies will determine whether this should become the standard treatment. Botox is just one of many drugs developed for one condition only to yield unexpected second or third applications. Some of the best-known serendipitous medications include Allergan originally developed Lumigan for glaucoma. Patients and physicians noticed it also resulted in long, lush eyelash growth. A version of the drug for cosmetic purposes sells under the brand name Latisse. Merck's Proscar was initially approved to treat enlarged prostrate, but came with the happy side effect of decreasing male pattern baldness. Propecia is the version marketed for baldness. And of course, Pfizer's Viagra was initially developed to treat high blood pressure, an indication that proved unsuccessful. But oh, what a failure. Poisonous animals also provide a seemingly dangerous source of life-saving remedies. Again, the dose makes the difference. Examples include Captopril, Bristol-Myers, Squibb's high blood pressure medicine, based on pit viper toxin. Another pit viper drug is Defibrace, which stops bleeding. It comes from a purified version of a protein found in the snake's venom. Pentafarm developed it and has been approved in Japan. Jazz Pharmaceuticals Prialt, an analgesic for severe and chronic pain, comes from a toxin produced by the cone snail. Integralin, a powerful anti-clotting drug developed by Millennium Pharmaceuticals, derives from the venom of southeastern pygmy rattlesnakes. Amelin Pharmaceuticals Bietta helps control blood glucose levels in type 2 diabetics and is a synthetic version of a protein obtained from Gila monster venom.